get some digital certificates and see how secure our encryption keys really are. So what we can do is we can analyze our keys that, that we have. So if we take a 72-bit key, then this is the number of possible keys there are. And then we could try and crack it, see, with trying 10 billion keys per second. And from that, we can actually determine how long it's going to take us. So if we go to 72 bits, you'll see for our, our key cracking of 10 billion keys per second, it's going to take us 7,000 years. In terms of 128 bit, it's going to take us 539 million, million, million years. That's a long time, even cracking 10 billion keys per second. So it looks as if we're pretty uh, secure. Okay, it's going to take that amount of time to crack our 128-bit keys. But unfortunately, what happens is that our keys are often stored with inside a digital certificate, or at least the encryption key is secured by a key pair, which is then stored on our certificate. And like it or not, the way that that certificate is, is protected is with a simple password. So if we take some an example, say of a, in this case we have a, a seven seven digit password. Well, that's an eight digit one. We'll just give it a little try. So if we select uh, a lowercase and uppercase, and we take say one billion per second, then we can see a seven digit password. Maximum time will be 17 minutes to actually uh, crack it. If we add in some letters, it just increases it a little bit, uh, up to about an hour there. For an eight-digit uh, password, it will take a maximum of about two and a half days to, to crack that. So even a complicated password, such as this one here, okay, it can be really, really cracked within, within, a, within a day. Okay, so we can see here that the password isn't really a, a very good method of protecting this thing that's meant to take 500 million, 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 million years to to, to crack. Okay, and it happened with uh, the Superfish uh, vulnerability where uh, the key pair was actually stored on uh, the client's machine and then it was simply cracked by using the password of Commodia. Okay, so let's have a little look and, and give this, this a try. So I've set up a page, just a simple page, and I've got a number of uh, certificates that can be used here. Okay, and then we just put in some passwords there. And what happens is that the code itself will go around and try to open up the certificate. If it doesn't open it up, then it will create an exception. The exception means that it can't open it. So eventually it will get to something that it can op open it with. In this case, it's apples, and it's able to read it. So the password is apples. I can try again on another one. So in this case, the password is, is battery. So it's going through each one until it finds one there. I'll try this one. Okay, so it's found that one as orange. So what I've done is set up a number of passwords, a number of uh, certificates here, and each one is related to uh, fruit. So I'll try the third one here. So if you click on that, I've loaded up a range of fruits, as you can see, and that will open it up there, and then just uh, press determine, and I can't find it, <laughs> which is unfortunate. We'll try another one. And this time it's found it as strawberry. Okay, so the uh, so y you should be able to to try each of the each of the different uh, uh, digital certificates and see how they're, they're created. Okay, if you want to know, then I've put in all the certificates here. even given some answers to what the certificates could, should be. I think this was the one I didn't get, which is Kiwi, and I've obviously forgotten to put Kiwi into my fruits. Just let me see if I can find it. And 
and is it there? So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that one's working okay. So we want to go to that one. And there it's there. Okay, so I got that one correct. So just show you how I, how I make the certificates. If you have a Visual Studio, then uh, you just open up uh, a, a command prompt from there. First thing we need to do is to create our certificate. So a certificate is fairly general. It actually defines details like uh, the name of the organisation, contacts and things like that. So the first thing that we actually do is to create our certificate. Okay, so just let me create a new certificate from here. Let me do that. Okay, so I'll just call it uh, new. Okay, so this can make a certificate. Common name is test. So I'll call it uh, new test. This creates a, minus R creates a self-signed certificate and so on. And this creates a, a key pair for us. And this produces our certificate. Okay, so I just give that a simple password of bill. And we should now have a certificate file. Okay, so there it's there. It's called New Tests because that's what we gave it, the name. There's a few details and so on. Okay, so there's the there's the public key. Okay, it's a nice nice certificate, but obviously it's self-signed uh, and it doesn't have the private key on it. Okay, so how do we now create the certificate? Uh, how do we now create a certificate which has the key pair? So what I've got is I've got uh, a private the, the private key that we the key pair that we created here and then we'll take the certificate file and then we'll create a pfx file with a password given here okay so let's do that so we just mark that just let me copy it Okay, so the key pair we created earlier was well, there we go. That's the so that's the key pair. That's the the certificate we just created, and then we're going to output that into well, new, and we're going to give it a password of um, onion. That's the password I've put on my private key pair, and that's in there. Okay, so now I have a PFX file. So you should find that uh, when you're importing, you can import it into your key store. So we used the password of onion. So that's that's actually imported. Then what we can do is we can go and have a look at the at the certificate store. There's all the certificates on the machine, and there's the new one that we've just added. There's the new test, and that's it there. Okay, so have a look, see the difference here. You now have the private key for the certificate. Okay, so that's the main difference that we have with the two certificates that we had before. One just had the public key on it. This one actually has the the, the private key, and it's a, it has a key pair. So there we go. Okay, so we can see the public key on it there, and uh, obviously it doesn't uh, show us the the the. the
private key uh, because we would want to export that from there. Okay, so so that shows you the uh, the difference. I just I just show you the two certificates again. Just so you can see the difference between them. Okay, there they are. Okay, this one doesn't have a key pair. This one does. Okay, and this is the files that we're actually uh, looking, we're checking the, the exceptions on. So what happens? We keep trying passwords. If we create an exception, then it isn't a valid password. Okay, so that's been a quick example of uh, using uh, public and private key certificates.